automatically opens to <clears throat> something. Uh, Crit Academy, and they always have their little streaming soon and music going. So I saw that your thing with Carrie is going to be airing tomorrow, right? Yeah, and apparently it's going to be a two-parter. What? We, 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 uh, we filmed it all at one time, but apparently we were all just so amazing there's nothing she could cut out. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I think she's probably doing some cool editing stuff where <coughs> we were in this building hold up and then about halfway through our thing not even halfway through then a couple of the characters that have been the main characters who this thing show up and we let them into the building and that's her right. build up. so I have a feeling she's going to kind of be editing some of their stuff in and then our stuff and then melding it, bring it all together. I just got the uh, <clears throat> invite for us to Plan out when everybody's available for our session zero on GI Jane. So that'd be cool. Cause that's a two-parter. There's one where there's just the GI Janes, and then there's a second parter where we're joined by some GI Joes. I don't know why you got the role instead of Jada Pinkett Smith. It's all hair. <clears throat> I was just deciding if I was going to come over there and slap you. Can I keep my name, my wife's name, out your fucking mouth? Yep. <clears throat> so, that'd be cool. Let's see if I can remember the accent for Jake or... You did really Southern. It's a very small step between very southern and very hillbilly. You know? Is it Yaker or? It's Yaker. Okay, but, but you But everybody but he... called me Jaker. I don't know why. I don't know why. That was it. <laughs> that was the accent. Cool. Do you want to do a recap from your notes? You took notes? I have one note. It says snake venom extractor. <clears throat> you have other notes on there. My heart melts like butter. Oh, wrong notes. <laughs> no. Nope, didn't take notes. Do you remember what happened? <clears throat> we took a train. Train broke down. I knocked a guy out inadvertently. Uh, we walked in. <coughs> we... Walked around, were sold some cool snake items, or at least tried to sell us some snake items, and then we checked into a inn, well, not an inn, a tavern, or Body Bills. Body Bills. Body Bills. Body Bills. That's what I said. You said Body Bills. It's Body Body. Bills. <clears throat> body. Body. Body Bills. And... Then we went down and somebody got bit by a snake. We followed them to the hospital. Jolly. Dr. Jolly. Dr. Jolly told us that people weren't coming in as much because they were getting this miracle elixir from... <clears throat> Eleanor. Eleanor. I did take notes somewhere. Where did I put my notes? Because um, I remember writing that down. Um, and... We went and bought ourselves some <clears throat> of this elixir. Yocker took it and uh, immediately fixed his not broken toe. And felt rejuvenated. I didn't take mine, saved it. And then we went back to Baldy Bill's to wrap it up for the night. And we saw the bartender sneak off. We saw a guy take it and dance off into the sunset. And then we were told about a snake charming thing happening in the back. There was a laying with snakes going on 
had body bills in the back. I thought that was what happened when the guy got bit. No. Or maybe it was, but there's a different thing. So you want to do the recap? I sure can. <clears throat> Eleanor had yes, Yester's Youth Serum. Yesler's. Yesler's. Yesler's Youth Serum. What's wrong? I and we decided we needed, you got us a sample of it, and we talked about, hey, the doctor was taking some notes, and Eleanor had a uh, freaking diary. We might need to get some info from you. I took notes. I just don't know what I did with them. <clears throat> what do you roll against to persuade? If an NPC were to roll a persuade against you, what would you roll against it? Um, intelligence, maybe? Power. Power makes sense. Power makes sense. Power. So you roll your persuade against your skill number. They roll theirs against their power, and then you compare um, levels of, you know, success, hard success, extreme success, or. All right, E seven oh one. Here's an ad going. <clears throat> Getting ad going. There is an echo, which means my thing must have run out. <coughs> I was going to say, yeah, you lost your It says donate to charity. Usually it says. Subscribe. Mm -hmm. They've been changing this stuff up on Twitch. I don't know if that was the one, but. So it doesn't show you anywhere it. where you're running it at? No. That's stupid. How would you know? Yeah, it's. Twitch is pretty. Skinky about ads. Skinky. <clears throat> so give me a little of your just talking in a regular voice. Me? You're just talking in regular voice. Do I need to be closer to the mic? I think you're about good. You're a little quieter than me, <clears throat> but you're not bad. Millie is a tinkerer, inventor, who recently lost her spouse in an accident. She was knocked out during the event, but townsfolk say there was an attack blamed on natives that one of her inventions exploded, killing poor, poor Harold. <clears throat> she is terrified that something she makes may harm other person. Woo. Woo. Good? I boosted you two up a little bit, so hopefully you'll be around the same volume as I am now. Okay. See that over? Yes. Epic. <clears throat> Glass tits. Glass tits. Brilliant. If not impractical. You can't motorboat those. All you can do is go the like the weird like okay, I'm done. I'm done. You, your batteries. I didn't get to go home. I literally like pulled in the driveway and got in the car with you. I'm sorry. You could have told me to grab you some batteries. I didn't think I needed them. Yeah. Batteries. Batteries. All right. Everybody ready? Ready. Aye, aye, Captain. Three. <clears throat> Don't click stop streaming. I was going to say, why would you click that? <laughs> All right. Three. Two, one. That is the wrong screen. Let's <laughs> <laughs> play find the. Here we go. Let's play, play find the. Yeah. God damn it. And we have a resubscribe thing up there, so I'll give that a minute. Hello, everyone, and we're back with our percentile vice, and this is our run-through of the snake's oil by 
the Under the Library crew and Keeper Michael with contributions from the rest of the squad. I am John. I will be the keeper of Pineapple Lore. And this is Emily playing Hi. Millie. And this is Steve playing Yocker, but an alternative universe Yocker because we don't actually know how this is going to end. And I may decide to kill him and it may need to be a different Yocker so that the other Yocker can still exist. And the accent's all wrong. <laughs> and the accent's all wrong. Well, we could put it to a vote, uh, the viewers, you know, of both episodes, whether they prefer the Yocker that they know over uh, under the library or the much better rendition of Yocker. <laughs> Some people call me Jaker. I don't know why. I keep telling them it's Yocker that they could find here. And, uh, you know, I think I'm willing to go head to head, accent for accent, me versus that dude over there under the lip. He has a lot more accents than you. Right, but we're only comparing character. this one to that one. Yeah, well, we, you know, he could claim that that is, you know, a, a character choice, but I believe he just kept screwing up and mocking, uh, matching the, uh, the accents of the people he was talking to, and rather than fight it anymore, he just decided that's what the character did. I, I believe that is actually confirmed in canon, so, so uh, I'll well, let that slide. Oh, uh, I appreciate it, because when the, when the masses begin to vote... I think I should get props and extra points for being able to maintain my accent regardless of who I might be speaking to. That's true, because I'm struggling to not. <laughs> Enjoying right in there with you. There you go. <laughs> well, percentile wise, as you know, we normally do not have a disclaimer or content warning, but the source under the library for this module does. So if you've ever been at a table and debated the practicality of glass breasts, this might be the show for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's hit up Emily for the recap of last week. So last week, uh, Millie and Yocker found themselves train bound to a snake festival <clears throat> that um, they were both going to be attending. The train broke down and they had to walk into town where they were able to buy a few things and see a couple different things, try some snake food, all that good stuff. Um, got some lodging at... Bowdy Bills. Bowdy Bills. Bowdy Bills. My body Bills. Bowdy Bills. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and partake of the festival's many attractions. Um, at one point, a man was bitten during some kind of demonstration with the snakes, and he was rushed to the uh, doctor, Dr. Jolly, which we followed, and found that most people had not been falling ill, or if they had, had been very quickly recovered due to uh, Yisler's Youth, Youth serum. serum that was being sold by a local lady, Eleanor. Eleanor, who was a local <clears throat> from Bloodstone and moved away for a while. Yeah, but she's back and selling this magic serum. So we hunted ourselves down this serum. Um, Yocker took the serum and felt instantly revived. And Well, see, I had this toe thing. You did have a toe I thing. I stubbed my little toe. You know, the little one. How, you know, stubbing the big toe is bad, but when you stub the little one, oh my God, that hurts. Because it it's less space for the pain to exist. Going in. out there. A couple yep. of sips of that you serum. All better. Felt great. Yeah. Um, Millie decided to keep her bottle um, due to some skepticism as to what this may or may not be doing to people. And they returned back to Bowdy Bills. Bowdy Bills? Bowdy Bills. Gotcha. I'm trying. It's just hard. Because I keep wanting to say Body Bills. <clears throat> but <clears throat> they returned back for a night of revelry with the other festival goers. Um, and saw a few strange things happen in that moment. They saw another man drink this serum and jump up and run off into the sunset. A newly revived man. We saw the bartender run off in the middle of the night. We kind of lost her. Mandy, isn't it? Mandy. Mandy, the bartender. Mm -hmm. I said, Mandy. She's a, she's a fine girl. Yeah, she's a good wife she'd be. Um, and we saw her run off into the, you know, into the street somewhere. We lost her. And we were told that there was something going on with some kind of like snake, laying with snakes or kissing snakes or singing to snakes. I don't know, going on in the back. They were in body bills, right? They were right, having, in the body I bills. I think it was a, a, a snake charming contest or something. Some up kind there. of. I wanted you to come look at it with me, but you was like, we got to go out and see why our Mandy's going off to and yeah. stuff. So we find ourselves in body bills 
amongst a very large crowd of festival goers. Um, also, it has been a week, so I will remind you that Yocker had the idea that you could possibly go look at the diaries of the doctor or... Oh, yeah, we did see Eleanor right, kept some the kind of... The journal of the doctor or the diaries of Eleanor. Correct. We did see some documentation going on on either side. And you had the great thought of we might be able to compare some of those notes and see if maybe there's some correlations. Right, because once we got done with Eleanor and I kind of shook off the the complete wow factor of, damn, this shit really works. I remembered that her <clears throat> job here was to try and figure out what the deal was with it and is a beneficial business uh, sense for both the doctor and myself if it is really just uh, a ruse and that this stuff doesn't Hogwash. actually do anything. Yeah, It's hurting his business, and I can see where it would hurt mine because, you know. You need people dying. Well, I do, because, you know, framing up and, and, you know, some artistic joinery on a, a nice casket or two is where I really excel. And the whole reason I came here is like, Snake Festival, there's going to be needs for some caskets. Yeah. But apparently the uh, the death rate is, ex- is substantially lower this year. And uh, we got to get to the bottom of this. So now that i got my head back around me, mm-hmm. I'm thinking... We saw that the doctor was taking copious notes in his journals about the people that presented themselves to him and, and their explanation of using the youth serum. And when we were at Eleanor's, I noticed she had a little diary. So now that I'm thinking straight again, you got a sample of this stuff so we can check it out. But also we could go, I don't know, get sneaky and see what the doc's been writing up about it and a little bit scarier, but maybe try and see what's in Eleanor's diary. I don't say scarier because she has some muscle with her. If I she recall. does, <clears throat> she got some bodyguards. So yeah, some, some bodyguards. Body <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate y'all. Body Bill is that a wrestler? <laughs> right. Ooh. So that was the recap. That was a great recap. Thank you very much. Thank you for your contribution. Your contributions there, guys. <laughs> well, like. The source of this module, we have to interrupt Emily while she's doing her recap. No. It's, it's tradition. Poor Emily. Wait, wait, they have an Emily doing it too, don't mm-hmm. they? Oh my God, the parallels are staggering. They is mm-hmm. staggering, I say. So you guys are in Bowdy Bills. <laughs> Mandy has left. <laughs> There's snake laying going on in the back. Do you think there's people laying with snakes or people like laying eggs of snakes? Do a spot hidden. Base of spot hidden is 25? The base of spot hidden is 25. Okay, well, I rolled a 67. Well, I think I'll do a little spotting of the hidden stuff myself. That's a 98. <laughs> <laughs> so it, Walk straight into somebody. <laughs> All you really see is that it looks like a semi-religious experience. Like, there's ritualization of it. There's incense and men in robes and women in robes and possibly non-binary people in robes. You can't really tell because they're all wearing robes and the robes look the same. They're not, like, gender. They're androgynous robes. Androgynous robes. That's a much better word. Thank you. And... (laughs) Well... I don't know about old Aunt Drogenus' robes, but I know that Uncle Henry's going to be pretty pissed when he finds out they've been taken. (laughs) (laughs) So you can tell it's some sort of, like, religious-looking experience. And what is your spot-hidden skill as a base? Because I believe in 98. So 25 is the base. Not you. Because you rolled a 60-something. Oh, you got lucky. Is a 98 a... Fumble. No, because my skill is over 50. But it would be if you were under 50. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's only a 99 or 100? Right. Okay. Man. <laughs> Sorry you, to disappoint. You were about to miss that snake crawling up your leg or something. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Anywho. You can't So really... used to the one crawling down my leg, I hardly even notice it. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want that one laying next. God damn it. <laughs> 
So what do y'all want to do? Does the snake laying look like it's a open event? Like people are coming and going? Or is there some kind of like entrance where people are having to like, you know, slip them a five or check IDs? People are kind of coming and going. But there is a nice barrier distance between participants and observers. Do you want to go watch the snake laying for a little bit? I think I do because it looks really interesting. But I was wondering maybe we can get a drink first. I'm going to turn to the bar. Is is there anybody manning the bar since Mandy left? Oh, I hope it's Bill. Body Bill himself. The Seldom myth, seen. Male in the myth, the legend. Make me a luck roll. Poof! You're a luck roll. <laughs> that is a fail. Um, thanks to the good people in the library. <laughs> I gave you Yonker so little. starts luck. off with a low, low luck roll, low, low luck percentage. But he had pretty good HP, so that there's a trade there. Mm. Yeah. What you got? I'm seeing worse. <laughs> On HP, it's an even dozen. It is. So, right. That's I have eleven. <laughs> See, look at me. I got almost ten percent more than you do. Um, yeah, I started off with uh, like 55 luck points. 25. Okay, so I don't feel like you traded. <laughs> you got swindled. <laughs> so you do see somebody who is behind the bar pouring drinks. And I think from your experience in the town, you would know this is not necessarily somebody you've ever seen as a bartender. But you know he is Lewis Nickley. The guy who runs the stables and corral. Well, what that, Lewis, you're Lewis Nickley, right, from over there at the, the stables and stuff. Yes, sir, I sure are you, am. Are, are you tending bar? Are you doing a little moonlighting job here? Things looking down at the stables? Well, ain't nobody else doing it, and Severin said... It'd be fine for me to pour myself a few as long as I kept putting them on my tab, you know. Severin, that's the big fellow over there. It seems like he's just like the, the the enforcer around here. Yeah, yeah. You know you know Severin. Yeah, I just never got many, many words out of him, so I was yeah. surprised he said something to you. So is it just basically a help yourself kind of thing, or are you running the bar? I, I, I can get you a drink. Well, I just like one of the house ales, you know, just pour me up something sudsy and yeller. But uh, I think the lady over there, he, she had a gin this morning. Have you got like a gin back there? And maybe put one little tonic in her for her? Uh, uh, well, we had we had some cotton that we shipped off to a gin a while back. Yeah. It's a white liquor. Smells like pine trees. They got that back there? Uh, hold on. And he turns around and he starts opening up all the white liquors and sniffing them. And he gets to one that you're pretty sure is the gym bottle, the same bottle from earlier. And I think this is it. Oh, you'll know when you get to it. Yep, that's the I one. I think this is it. it. It smells like some pine. It's uh, it's it's an acquired taste, I hear. I don't think I'll be drinking any of it, but I'll pour you some, miss. Put a couple well, thank things. you. Yeah, I'll give you the little something for the lady. You, you got the, the drinks uh, back around lunchtime, didn't you? I did. So I get this one. Okay. And just put that on my tab there, Lewis. Well, you're gonna I'm have in the room to, right up there. You're gonna have to put it on your own tab. I, I don't do none of that writing and reading. And you look over as he says this because you hear some tapping in the corner and it is Severin. As he says, put it on your own tab, he's tapping the shotgun to his hand, like the pump. And you can roll a psychology if you want. But your no, initial... I think it's pretty loud and clear. Yeah, <laughs> There's no think, tabs yeah. tonight. Go ahead and roll a psychology, because apparently it was not very loud and clear. 34, which is, for me, a regular success. So 80-something. Uh, you can tell he is not trying to be threatening as in, don't drink anything tonight. He's trying to be threatening as in, you better be putting it on your tab. Gotcha. 
So I'm going to reach into my pocket. I got a little pad of paper there that I'm usually scrawling out uh, length and width measurements on, and, you know, like a little nub of a pencil, and I'm going to write down one drink, one gin, smells like pine trees. One bourbon, so one scotch. While you're pouring it up, while you are writing it up, he is pouring it up, and your ale is just a normal ale, and your gin and tonic is pretty strong, but not bad. <clears throat> what would you like to do now? Well, all right, now we got a drink. Well, let's go into the other room. Yeah, let's go. I want to see what they're doing in there. I mean, if you're going to come to the Snake Festival and not get to build no boxes, you at least want to see the festivities. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's go. The I'm ready. Festivalizations of the whole scenarios. I. I'm really excited. I don't even know what snakeling is, and I'm very excited to learn about it because I feel like... Well, it's not to be confused with what we saw earlier. The gentleman got bit. That was snake sleeping. You'll recall we were corrected back then. That's that's right. I do recall that. So, as you're walking off, you hear Lewis say, That's all right. Y'all can tip me later. I put it on my tab. When they settle up at the end of the month, I'm sure you're going to get yours. All right. You walk through and... There's uh the bar is not that big, but there's sort of an area that isn't really cordoned off, but it's sort of an open area in a corner, and it's where they're doing the snake laying. And as you approach, nobody participating notices you, but the crowd kind of shifts a little bit to let y'all move forward and see what you want to see. And... As you get a closer look at things, it looks like what you've already had described to you. There's people laying down. There's people chanting and holding incense and waving incense in the air. And the snakes are all around them, slithering, going into and out of clothing and over faces and weaving around arms and legs and going all over the place and you hear plenty of rattles and other s- snaky sounds can i walk around kind of the people who are watching and just kind of listen into the conversations that are happening around me sure uh what do you have on a listen i have a 50 percent. okay roll listen if it was lower than 50 i was gonna have to think about maybe i rolled a 19 so a hard success hard success that's good all right um you hear a couple of normal things you know observations about what's going on general wow what was that a couple of this is fucking crazy I would never have them snakes all over me like that and you also hear Lewis Nickley who has left from behind the bar and kind of followed you all over and he's talking to somebody nearby him about the youth serum and how great it is and that it cured all his ills but it ain't made him much prettier than the women folk, and you might recall that he had quite a obnoxious burn scar on his face. So it's interesting that that would be his uh, takeaway from that. And is the burn scar still on his face? It is. Yeah, I got you. Where was the rest of the... Ah. So, you hear these two older women, and they are not in the snake ritual. Mm -hmm. They are at a table just kind of having drinks together, and there's a slightly younger woman with them. And one of them says, so, I know what happened with Jolly and Eleanor back in the day. And the other one's like, oh, 
do tell, do tell. And she says, well, what I heard was they were together, even though that's a shameful age gap. You know, out here, you kind of have to, even if it is an older man, you kind of have to get what you get. And he went and cheated on her with a prostitute, and she poisoned him. And that's why his leg ain't working no more. And the other older lady's like, oh, that's terrible. I don't even know why they let her back into town. And then the younger woman down the side said, that's a load of malarkey. Everybody knows that she was too young for him, and she wore him out so bad that <clears throat> his leg just don't work no more. It just stopped working one day. And after that, she decided to leave because she knew she wasn't no good for him, and it wasn't going to work. So you're saying that he had relations with this younger woman until he went limp? Are you asking them that? Or He's just taking the you. opportunity to make a pun? Just an opportunity to make a pun because he went limp. Limp. He, he most certainly did. And you would have noticed that last time, I believe. Hey, hey Millie. Are you overhearing what I'm overhearing? Mm. These ladies are talking about the, the objects of our uh, our investigation right there, all at one table. Oh, they certainly are, and it's very interesting. So now the question is, is, did Eleanor poison him, and does that have anything to do with the snake serum? And did she get forced out of town, or did she leave on her own? Is she really that good that she made his leg go bad? Like That just seems like a whole lot of information and not a whole lot of answers. Well, when you say it like that, it just sounds confusing as hell for everybody. Yeah. So, uh, I think, I don't know, you want to get closer and just listen in, or, I don't know, you know, you, me, I don't know, which one of us would be best to go up there and say, well, that ain't what I heard, and try to draw more out of them. Mm. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not super great with talking to people. All right, let me try. So, I'm going to just, uh, like, intentionally stumble just a little bit. Over towards her tail. Oh, excuse me, ladies. I, my apologies. There's all these people around here and the snakes and the laying and all that stuff going on. I couldn't help but overhear you talking about uh, Eleanor and, and old Doc Jolly. That's, uh, you know, I think both of you got the story wrong. Oh, do you? No, he had that limp well before he met her. And it was because he had such a limp that he lost her. What do you mean? Well, she just wasn't interested in continuing a relationship with a, a gentleman what was limp. And they sort of look at each other, and then they look back at you, and one of the older ones, the one that hasn't come forth with an explanation yet, she says, Well, Yocker, with all that aside... She's got this miracle serum that she's been giving out to everybody in the town. Why hasn't Jolly taken it for his bad leg yet? There's got to be something going on, something in the past that happened. And I, I do believe he had that limp around the time that she left town. I've been in this town a while, Yocker. I know you're in and out, but... Uh, I, I, I'll give you that. Now, you're right here much more. I mean, I'm just talking from memory and stuff, but it seemed like he's had that limp for a good long time. But uh, it does seem odd he ain't tried it, but, you know, being a doctor, he'd kind of be like setting a, a wrong example in his mind if he was to be trying some kind of use serum instead of the, the practice of, of science and medicine that he's become accustomed to and known for. And the first lady says, well, maybe you're right, but, I mean, he had that limp since 1890, and I just can't think of why else. And Susie down at, down at the store was telling me about it, and I... I think it just might, makes sense. I think you might be on to something. So you're saying that Eleanor did something to him that gave him to them. And now she's got this serum that could possibly cure, but she either she ain't allowing him to have none or he got too much pride to take it. Which one do you think it is? 
I, I'm not sure. I think it's probably that she won't give it up to him because if, if I was with somebody in that sense and they decided to go see one of these harlots in a tavern somewhere instead of spending the night with me, I, I wouldn't be giving them no medicine either. Uh, I can't blame you for that point of view and that stance on it. I do tell you, though, what I know, Doc Jolly, it's hard to believe that He'd be off a of whoring. Whoring. The younger lady <clears throat> says, that's why it makes more sense that she was just so much that he couldn't handle it. And his leg went limp, and he's too prideful now to take that medicine. I'm going to have made my way over there to them. Um, kind of stand next to Yocker. Uh, you enjoying your drink? Oh, I, hey, I am so sorry. Uh, Miss Millie, this is... I- I'm going to reach my hand out. Uh, Millie! <laughs> and start shaking hands with ladies. You don't know what you could just... One reaches up and says, Hi, I am Rosanna. Nice to meet you. It's and very I'm gonna, nice to like, meet you. A half a second after she says her name, they say, Rosanna! <laughs> like, I knew it all along. Right. And then the other older lady, her name is Mildred. This is Mildred right here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mildred. I absolutely love your name. Is it short for Mildred as well? No, it's just Millie. It's just Millie. Just Millie. Isn't like Billy, that but interesting? Mm-hmm. Um, I heard y'all talking about Miss Eleanor. We met her today, didn't we, uh, Yaka? We met her today. We we did. She is she is quite the uh, nice young lady. I did hear you say there was like an age gap. What's the what's the age difference between the two? Uh, it's got to be at least twenty years. And how old is Mr. Is Dr. Jolly? Because he's a very handsome uh, man, but I, I just couldn't quite put, you know, an age to him. I'd say he's got to be at least in his 50s now. Mm-hmm. And Eleanor, around 1890, when all this was supposedly going on, would have been 14, 15, 16. Okay. I, I, probably 16, I, I think. Oh, that's a big gap in years, but I can't say it ain't been done before. I mean, it's pretty commonplace. Right. So just thinking back, how old did Eleanor look when we saw her today? Let me, because we're dealing with numbers here, I want to get the numbers right. So let me confirm numbers real quick. You're fine. You know, Millie, I was thinking that, uh, you know, the the expertise you have with the, you know, inventive stuff that, uh, you know, if the doc's stubborn and won't take that uh, cure-all medicine, uh, the use serum, maybe you could make him like some kind of contraption that would help him get rid of that limp. Oh, I might. Just something like to stabilize the leg and and falsely articulate the way that the knee would. Yeah, I could definitely do something with that. Right, and you could call it like a falsely articulating leg stabilizer. That's a great name. My husband would have loved that name. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So So with a quick scan. You know, something to really brace it with, but you could call it. (laughs) With a quick scan, I'm not finding exact numbers. But I, I, I do want you. to change the 16 to 20. Okay. Just because. Safer bet. Now that, like, I've said that and have implied that there was some sort of relationship. It feels skeevy. It feels skeevy. So you and said. And I don't think that was intended anywhere in here. It was just a big age gap. You said he's how old now? Got to be in his 50s at least. Early I mean, 50s. I'll give it to you that he's uh He's a handsome looking man, but handsome in that kind of rugged, been around the block a few times, got some experience and wisdom right. to him kind of way. And if it's important to you, the year now is 1893. So it happened about three years ago, whatever they're talking about. The falling out betwixt Eleanor and Jolly. So this is implying that then he was in his late 40s and she was in her early, she was 20 and now she is approximately 23. Something like that. Okay, I'm just... Right. It's not a... Like, it's skeevy by today's standards for an age difference, but it's not super skeevy for back then because no. of... 
As an almost 60-year-old man, I find absolutely nothing skeevy about dating a 20-year-old. I'm just going to lay that out there. <laughs> you bring home a stepmom for me that's younger than me, and I will lose it. <laughs> All right, we're going to run an ad. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, so to sum up, three years ago, Eleanor was looking to get her jollies, but he came up limp. Yes, Got it. exactly. Okay. Something. Um, ha- what you do know is something happened and she left town. I think right. you would know that just from local. All right. So I wonder, did, did something happen like between them or something else happened and then she left and then it appears that there was a falling out between them? How much of this are you saying out loud? Every bit of it. Right there at the table with the ladies. The younger lady who hasn't introduced herself yet, she stands up and says, Hi, I am... Female name here. Selena. Hi, Selena. It's nice to meet you. I don't believe we've met before. I, I, I believe I've seen you about town, but I don't think we've been formally introduced. And well, she reaches great up to meet and you. I'm Yocker, shakes but you hand. heard them say, you know, Yocker. Some people call me Jaker just because they don't know no better because it's kind of spelled that way, but it's pronounced Yocker. Oh, that's so rude. I hate that. People always call me Selena. I don't like that. I yeah. understand how that is. But you were asking, and I don't think a lot of people know this, but oh, Eleanor's little brother, he was in my class in primary school. Well, yeah. I, a lot of people don't know this, but it seems to be something that was just completely forgotten. But her little brother, Walt, ended up getting himself shot by Pete the Poet. Right before she left town, so that may have had something to do with it, but what I figure is, that's what put her in the position where she was trying to get with an older man and feel a little more secure, like Pete the Poet wasn't going to come after her too. But why did her? Why did her little brother get shot by? I mean, in primary school, why would he have shot a child? Well, I I, I don't want to speak ill of the dead, so I I. I I'll just leave that out there, but it was, it was a case of frontier justice, if you will. Was it was uh, was the poor boy killed right there on the spot, or did they like take him to to Doc Jolly? I'm wondering if you know Doc Jolly's in. A, first of all, is the boy dead? He he is gone. I wonder if Doc Jolly's inability to do anything to help may have come between them. It's possible. I mean, that would definitely drive a wedge between you. I don't know that much about that kind of specifics. All I know is he got shot by Pete the Poet. He's gone. A few it's, months later, Eleanor's gone. When you say gone, you do mean he, he's passed on. He's dead. He's buried. Yeah. Oh, okay. But then Eleanor was a different type of gone. Right. As in I just, just wanted not to clarify. Here. But now she is here. Yes, she is. Um. Now, uh, this... Uh... This Pete the Poet now, that, that sounds like a, a, a colorful character right there. Um, be well known in these parts because, you know, I mean, I ain't from here, but I come down pretty regular. Seems he, like there's some child-killing poet named Pete I'd hurt. He, he's pretty well known, and I don't think a lot of people think of him as a child killer. Just he had to be the one to deliver that justice that day. Oh, uh, he was in an unfortunate situation where he had to take it upon himself. Yeah, yeah. One of them kind of things. Hmm. But then again... Well, what was the rate? You don't... What was the act which brought upon the frontier justice? I don't want to speak ill of the dead. Uh, I understand. Uh, one day I'm going to die. I don't know if speak ill of me. You I wanna... hope they put me in a good box, though. Either of you can roll a psychology on that statement. If you'd like. I ain't got no psychology. Well, I got a good roll. Let's hope I got the psychology to back it up. I got a regular success. You are pretty sure from the look on her face and body language that it's more about her not knowing why, just knowing that it happened, than not wanting to speak ill of the dead. She just doesn't want to admit that she doesn't know it. Yeah, gotcha. Well, um, Serena, 
Uh, Selena. I'm sorry, Selena. You feel free to call me Jaker one time, okay? All right, Jaker. All right, now we're even. Selena, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, hey, I was just wondering, is, is is old Pete the poet, is he still in around these parts? I I hadn't seen him in a while. You might be able to track him down, but he probably went over to Deadwood or somewhere else for a little while. I, don't, I haven't seen him in a while. Hmm. Do you have any friends in these parts? Oh, did you say... Hey, Pete, Pete, you know, who who do you hang with? You know, didn't you have a buddy that would sit on a porch and spit tobacco and miss the spittoon and cause terrible stains on the boardwalk? Hmm. I think there was a particular note on Pete the Poet. Not what I'm thinking of. (laughs) I kind of got down a rabbit hole because I was like, in my brain, I was like, maybe this happened like forever ago. Like the relationship between Jolly and her and like he aged and she didn't and we were going to find like, yeah. And then the math didn't work. The math didn't work. I mean, she still could be. We just have to wait about 20 years to find out. Look, you know, he's dead set against this stuff. Dead She's set. bringing it, the stuff in. We find out they used to be commiserating with each other. She got a dead brother called by his Pete the Poet. Seems like we got to go back in time three years. Not actually, but I mean, that's where we ought to be looking at what happened there. And maybe you'll give us some answers on why why the doc is like that. That serum ain't worth a damn, and she's like, it's the best thing in the world. And I bet them, them their diary what if, might tell us something. But I also think, you know, if this Pete the Pope was around or somebody knew Pete the Pope, maybe we can get the story of what the frontier justice was required. Maybe we should leave these ladies to their drinks and me and you uh, head on over to our own table. Well, And I will take that with a bit of a blush on my face to realize that I've just been politely told I was talking about our business too much in front of these people. <laughs> <laughs> when you start to go leave... Mildred grabs your hand because she realizes your question has not been answered yet. And she grabs your hand in in a very hushed tone. She says, now listen, I know you're a local, so I'm going to go ahead and fill you in because most of us already kind of know this story. But what had happened was Eleanor would sometimes come down here and, you know, flash a little leg, you know, wink or bat her eyelashes at some dude. Long story short, she'd get four or five of them in here fighting over which one she liked the most. And while they're fighting, her little brother Walt would come up, grab whatever they had in their pockets, and haul ass. And one day, Pete the Poet was in here, caught it, shot him dead between the eyes. Right here in the, in the, in, in Bowdy Bells, right? Right here. And it was the weirdest thing, because in Pete the Poet fashion, he didn't say, I'm sorry, or damn, I shouldn't have killed that kid. He said, I remember it like yesterday, I do. He said... Death is but a moment, a moment between life and what we have to discover. Everyone will venture, yet all the stories told are but conjecture. And then he walked out. And I tell you what, even though it was an open and shut case, they declared him innocent. Now, You tell me who his friends are. If I was you, I would stay well away from Pete the Poet. Oh, yeah. And you hear a snake rattle, a a very tiny snake rattle. Sounds like a cell phone vibrating almost. Oh, wow. (laughs) 
Well, Mildred, I appreciate you putting me wise to, to all that. Um, seems like it's just an unfortunate set of events, but seemed like the reaction was a little more uncomfortable. But I, I think I'm catching you drifting because uh, who was uh, who was friends enough with Pete Poe that he just walked away from all that without so much as a charge against him? Then uh, whoever his friends be, they're in high places. I don't want to run so foul of them. Yeah, I, I would just drift right away from Pete the Poet if you catch my drift. But but but, but I ain't one to gossip, so you ain't heard that from me. No, oh, no, ma'am. Well, that's just common knowledge around here, and I just now recalled it. And she pats her hand and turns back to her table, and y'all are free to do whatever you choose. So, <clears throat> that's a very interesting story. I mean, they, to shoot a child just for pickpocketing, and I mean, that seems a bit excessive. But um, uh, I can see how we got the name Pete the Poet, because that was very long-winded. Uh, <laughs> bit of conjecture on his part but i was thinking about something uh that i want to say it's a pity they didn't arrest him and put him in jail though well i mean if his friends in high places happen to be those that are either sheriffs in jail just spouting some of his long-windedness and it'd be like there you go pros and cons god damn it i quit (laughs) i can quit so anyway you were saying i don't he left. Right. But here's what I was thinking. So you remember Lewis Neckley, uh, Nickley, excuse me. Yeah. So he took the serum. Right over there. Right there, yeah. But he said he took the serum, but he still has that horrible scar, right? It didn't make him any prettier with the women folk. Right. So the serum didn't heal the scar, so there's a very good chance that even if Doc Jolly took the serum, it wouldn't fix the limp. That is an excellent point. Now, I know it fixed my little pinky toe. But that was an active problem that was happening. Because, see, in science, you can look at, you know, there's correlation and causation. And it's, it's two different things. And so, you know, just because it's curing things that are happening now doesn't mean it's going to cure things that have already happened. They're permanent to the body. So it's possible that Dr. Jolly did try to take it, and it just didn't have any effect on a pre-existing condition. It's almost like it wasn't covered under his insurance. Well, you know, he's seen a little... Uh non-plus with the whole situation around here, but other than that, he seemed friendly towards us. Maybe we could just ask you. We were out to, and he did say it didn't work with all evidence to the contrary that it does. So maybe it just didn't work for him. And, you know, if you, we went in there and you showed him that bottle you got that ain't been drunk yet, we'd probably read on his face whether or not he was interested in taking some but just hadn't been allowed to. That's true. But I just was, I was wondering that, because I noticed that when I noticed that scar on that man's face, I was thinking, well, if he took that serum, wouldn't that scar be gone? But I wonder if there's something about a um, a time delay to it. So, but yeah, so maybe in the morning, uh, second day, we should uh, head over to Doc Jolly's and ask him. I'm all for that, but I hate wasting opportunities, too. Mm-hmm. Because we had previously talked about some more of uh, the adventures of a sneakish nature. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, nighttime is the best time for those kinds of things. So It's true. Do I know whether or not Doc Jolly, like, lives, like, over his little clinic um, or if he has a different house? or Make me look real. I guess you need to decide which way you want it to be, and then it decides if you're lucky or not. Oh. <laughs> uh, hold on. Yeah. From there, I thought it was a 005. Turns out it was an 80. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. No. No. I'm not there. Can't remember. One way or the Do you want to make me a luck roll? Sure. We'll make it a group luck roll. I rolled a 46, which is a success for me. So you guys can tell me where he lives. He's got a little house on the edge of town because when he's done a doctoring for the day, he likes to just, you know, like get away from it all for a little bit. Every now and then somebody in the middle of the night gets hurt and they got to run out to his house and bang on his door. And then he'd be like sleepy and pulling on his britches and be like, meet me at the clinic and I'll be right there. And Yeah, That's what happens. Yeah. So He doesn't like to mix work and home life. You don't work where, you know, 
you know, shit where you work. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know, before we hit the bed, what do you, what do you say? We, I don't know, go peek around in the doctor's place and get a look at those. He had journals going for a while now. That's true. We could go back through years. And, now, I have a feeling it's more of a doctorly nature in them journals, you know, like patient presented with and 72 degrees Fahrenheit, blood pressure above 17. I don't know what all that doctor shit is, but I have a feeling it's going to be more of that nature. But maybe we'll get lucky and three years ago they'll be like, oh, wow, why did she leave me? She came down with a case of the pain in the ass. Right. Yeah, uh, we can definitely go give it a shot. Um, I'm not super sneaky, but I will certainly try not to be a hindrance. Well, well see, I don't think we got to be real super sneaky. He's probably home to bed. And everybody here is in the midst of snake elevations, which is what the kind of, you know, I think you know what it means. I think I do, too. <laughs> Well, at that very moment while y'all are discussing this, you hear a crack of lightning. And both of you can go ahead and give me an intelligence. I rolled a 41, which is a regular success for me. I also got a regular success. So both of you would be able to surmise with the storm and lightning you probably wouldn't have a problem with being discovered because people are going to go inside this is perfect we got the storm covering our noises and stuff and plus people are like i won't get rained on and there's lightning in the sky and well hell there's people playing with snakes in here while we just step inside yeah let's go let's go all right so you're gonna head down to the doctor's down to the doctor's office the clinic yeah all right you get there as most places in this era are not locked you pretty sure you'll be able to get in whichever way you want and there's no candles lights nothing on what do you want to do um do i have enter Going to open the door, sneak, slip in, and then close the door behind us. Do, right. do I have a method of light? Um. Yeah. Tell me what your method of light is. You carry around a candle? Yes. And you would have remembered you seeing lanterns and candles in the actual clinic. So okay. You yeah. go back in. Everything is... As you remembered it, there's maybe a speck or two of random fluid here or there that he missed cleaning up. But it looks like there was an attempt made to clean up and everything's put back in order. What do you want to do? So there's the journals right up there. Um, I'll take this opportunity to tell you that, you know, I can do some ciphering with numbers and stuff for, you know, building the boxes. But reading ain't never one of my strong points. But I get the feeling it's one of yours. Oh, definitely. So uh, why don't you pull down one of them journals? I think I'd start with today because I think he made some notes about that guy that came in there and yeah. maybe something about the about the, the use serum. And, and I'll keep an eye out the window and make sure we ain't disturbed. But after you look at that, I'd jump back to three years ago and see if we can't get to the point in time with the... You know, the young boy, uh, what was his name? Why? Well, um, his name was Walt. Walt. Walt, Walt and, P- and, and, and Pete the Poet. Or was it Poet Pete? I Pete the Poet. Pete the Poet. See if there's something around that time. And I'll keep an eye on you. Holler if you will. Whisper if you need me. I will. So I want to go over to the book. I want to pull the book down from today and look at the entry for the young man that was brought in today. It is very straightforward medical chart. Subject came in with laceration caused by snake bite. Was given antivenin. Cleared up in two to four hours. Prescribed analgesic. 
okay. regular, normal looking stuff. So I want to kind of look over that and I kind of want to be able to get an understanding since I was there for that situation. I, I know what happened. I want to look at what he writes and kind of understand how he breaks down his information. Cause Give I was me a present. library use because you were present. Can, can, I, can I make a case for something else? You can try. So hear me out. Mechanical repair. This is why. So if I'm taking something apart and reading a manual and doing it at the same time, I understand how the manual describes information to me, right? So if I read that manual for some other part that I don't have in front of me, I still have a good understanding of how it describes information and the terms it uses for that that I could apply even if I don't have the part in front of me. All right. Do it with a bonus dice because that was a very uh, sensible answer. I think I'd have done better because I got my carpentry skills and I'm good at putting things together. <laughs> um, so a 14. Okay. That sounds like an extreme success. For me, for a library news, success, no. Huh? Uh, that would be a regular success. No, you were oh, okay. using mechanical repair. So then, yes, that's an extreme success because I'm a 75. Okay. So, yeah, you. Okay. So I feel confident pretty... that I understand his charging techniques. Mm hmm. So now I want to go back to about three years ago and using those charting techniques, see if I can't find any anomalous deaths or look for the boy named Walt. I want to look through and kind of use that information to see if anything strange happened around Walt's death. So what year in particular? Three years ago. 1890. 1890. Okay. He whispered from across the room as he's looking out the window. Hey! It's 1890. It's 1890s. You're about to grab the 91 book. Go one more to the left. 1890. You didn't like my, my play for uh, mechanical repair? I thought it was great. <laughs> Extremely contrived. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Some shit John would do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you, not only did he buy it, he gave you a bonus dice. I, I like that kind no, of thing. I, I do too. I'm like, I'm, kudos. It worked. So you are pretty confident that if there's anything to be found found, <laughs> found, found, found <laughs> if there's anything to be found here, be about him your, your <laughs> accent is infecting the whole table right, it's so, backward jocker it just proves that i'm stronger at my accent <laughs> Yeah, the the original Yockers was so weak that it ended up flowing to other people's mind. It's so strong and is causing the same effect upon the rest nice. of the people. Has nothing to do with the fact that we live in Georgia and we've been conditioned to talk like yokels our whole life. <laughs> That's how I get good tips when I would work in the waitressing. Hey, Shig. <laughs> I get made fun of so much for calling people Shug. I can't break that. So you are... I forgot what the fuck I was... <laughs> You are pretty sure that if there's anything to be found, <laughs> you'll be able to find it. But these are pretty thick journals. The one you were looking at earlier had kind of a bookmark to the day's date mm -hmm. and wasn't all the way through. But the one for 1890 is full and thick. And you reckon right. it'd take you about an hour to peruse. Are you willing to spend that hour? Yeah. Okay. Since you had a pretty good idea on how to crack into these journals, instead of making the luck roll, you will, in an hour, find that passage in one of his journals. And I can go ahead and I, put that, is that on the how screen he spells for everybody. Jolly, yeah. It's not Yale's? No, it's Jolly. Look, don't get started now. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's J-A-L-E. <laughs> it's J-A-K-E-R, and it's Yocker. I've never missed it. You're going to start picking at that one, then I'm going to think that, you know, subversively, you've been thinking the whole time that I'm Jaker. It's going to piss me off just a little bit. All right. Man's got a right to spell his name the way his parents gave it to him and say it the way they did. Okay. Uh, so this says, awoke, she was gone. I started off and left nothing in my, and bleh, bleh, bleh. I stared off and felt nothing in my left leg. It was like it was dead, but attached to me. My head pounded so bad. I looked for the whiskey and then I saw the 
skins across the floor. They were sloughed off in a pile. I pushed myself up and the broken glass split open my palm, reminding me of the burning... I'm sorry, this is all in really, like, cursive script, so I'm struggling a little bit. Reminding me of the burning as the poison slipped down my throat. It was definitely poison at that point. Something was wrong. A word mistranslated on or whole parts left out altogether. As I lay the skins across her belly, I can't, <laughs> I can't read it. I'm sorry. I, it's, it's very script text. It's difficult for me. I don't have my glasses. All right. I'll, I'll start at the paragraph. Something was wrong. A word mistranslated or whole parts left out altogether. As I laid the skins across her belly, there was a twinge, a beckoning from beyond that told me it was all wrong. It's all wrong. We will pay for trying to subvert the ways of nature and bypass that which has been since the beginning of time. I fear these physical ramifications are merely the beginning of what's to come, and may God protect us, though we have defiled his wishes. In the end, it is my fault. I should be a better doctor. I should be more careful, and I should have finished the reading. Now I know that the author themselves, whoever they may be, said this was a part, a parcel of what they had found. It was never meant to be used, but... And that's it. And then there are a couple of pages around that front and back ripped out. And you kind of get the feeling that maybe this one should have been ripped out too. Don't be showing off shit. <clears throat> Sorry. What you find over there? Well, I found a note where he was talking about being poisoned and his leg going numb and skins that had been slopped off and draping them over somebody's body and reading some kind of text. And whoever wrote the text was not finished with it or it was only partial that they found or something and that they were trying to like defile God's wishes and uh, and mess with nature and he should be a better doctor it was all very strange. And I'm going to hand it over to him and let him look it over. You read, do you want to? Do you want to see a copy of it? Cause, uh... I know on your screen it would be really small, so. Yeah, I can tell you, I'm, I'm not having the best time with this, the, the words written here, but uh, based on what you said and a little bit of tracking I can do along with it, it sounds like. Well, you know, if the if the she that that he's referred to in here is Eleanor, and then skins and sloughing, and it sounds like they was up to something that wasn't real sciencey in nature. It was kind of mystical. My old uncle he used to he get real drunk sometimes, and, and Uncle Jeb would start talking about folks around these parts sometimes. Practicing witchcraft and stuff like that. And that's what this is kind of sounding like to me. Like some of that hocus pocus, no good for you and me is kind of stuff. Yeah, no, it seems very strange. The word slop, slopped off, that's it's a very abs- unique term. Oh, it's not all that unique out here in the country to slough something off. You know, it's just like like a snake is going to slough off that skin of his. Yeah, that's what I was... I was <coughs> like, I've heard it a couple times today. People talking about the skin sloughing off and, and shedding their skins. It's it's a, it's a strange uh, coincidence. A little coinky dink. Oh, my God. What if that was snakes they was talking about? But, I mean, I suppose. I mean, listen, the snake fest has been going on for years. And this is only three years ago. Well, yeah. Well, uh, I don't see anything about the boy. I don't either, but, but, they did, uh, this, uh, he pushed myself up, up and glass, but, and palm, and he's all over the place here, that's for sure. Um, you know, part of said out to me, I fear these physical ramifications are merely the beginning of what's to come. Well, it's three years later, and he still only got that one dead leg he talked about up there at the beginning paragraph. That's true. 
So I guess his fear was unfounded, at least as to himself, that is. It's my fault. I should have been a better doctor. Should be more careful. I should have finished the... It sounds like they... they they found something that was all witchcrafty or whatever, and they were like, let's give this a try. And it's like, maybe they was trying to bring the boy back. Maybe. But But he was talking about poison that he drank. As I skins across her belly, there was a twinge a beckoning from beyond that told me it was all wrong. Well, it also talks about the poison. It doesn't sound as though she poisoned him. It sounds more like he drank it willingly. It doesn't give the connotation of somebody who was poisoned without their knowledge. It sounds more along someone who w- willingly ingested something and found out it was poison, like a part was missing, something was wrong. Maybe him and her were trying to figure out how to do this serum, and they got it wrong. Who knows? Maybe they were missing something, and that's why she left. She went to go find the missing piece. Maybe she found it and was able to make the serum. But the damage is done to him. It's already done. It's all speculation, of course. It is, but this is some right interesting stuff, man. I'm gonna I mean, rip- the very first thing he says, he woke and she was gone. Yeah. Well, then whose body did he drape the skins across? Well, she was gone. But think, like gone, gone? talking gone, or? about what had happened before. Because, so, you know, he woke. And, you know, he couldn't feel nothing in his left leg. He was dead but attached to him. His heart pounded and he looked for the whiskey. And that's when he saw the skins across the floor. They were sloughed off in a pile. Pushed myself up on a broken glass, split open my palm, reminded me of the burning as the poison slipped down my throat. It was definitely poison at that point. Mm-hmm. At that point. I mean, if it was poison now, wasn't it poison before? Gonna be poison. It sounded like you got something that he thought maybe wasn't poison. You figure? You yeah. hear me? And yeah, it was I poison do. at that point. Something was wrong. So. But it sounds to me like he talks about she's. Wait gonna, a minute. He said she was gone. Remember earlier we were talking about gone or gone, gone. Right. Is she gone as in she left or gone as in dead? But it sounds like he's talking about another body that he draped the skins of the the snakes over. Oh, my God. I think she was dead. And he tried one of these hokey-pokey, hocus-pocus kinds of things and using these skins that had been sloughed off. Laid them across her. And then he never talks about her again. It's just like, oh, everything went to hell and back. We did it all wrong. But what if he figured out how to do it right? What if it was wrong, but she got up and now she's wrong? Go you know on saying. And it could be. I think we got to look at her journal. All we got here is a mystery wrapped up in an enigma. Sandwiched between a conundrum. Right. Right. Thank God for putting the conundrum part in there because I almost couldn't get my head around it. <laughs> Two pieces of conundrum white bread on the side of it. Mm. Bam, I got it. <laughs> so I'm going to rip out this page and take it with us. Okay. At um, this point, it is roughly 10 p.m. So the question is, is, do we think we can safely take a gander at her diary? Or is maybe speaking to her... Was it a 10 or 20 minute walk down the road to where her little wagon was propped up right outside of town? Something like that. Well, why don't we just sneak that way and have a look-see? And if it looks like Everybody's off or asleep, and then we, if it looks like we got an opportunity, we take it. Otherwise, we go home and go to bed, and the next day is a bright light of day, and that's bad sneaking time. So we might as well just see if there's an opportunity here. Okay. All right, so you're walking down to her wagon? Yeah. Yep. Are you attempting to be sneaky? Yep. Try to stick to the shadows as best as possible. When you come out you notice the rain has slacked off it's not nearly as loud and noticeable as it had been go ahead and roll me some stealth rolls oh no i don't have any stealth 
And the base of stealth is 20%. Can make an argument that it's dark and it's kind of post stormy, that, uh, you know, maybe these rolls deserve a bonus die. Go ahead and give them a bonus dies. And then give them a penalty dice because there's also a bunch of mud puddles. Squishy you have mud. To... <laughs> Just the bonus dice. I think that's fair. Uh, 61. That's the best you could do? My bonus die gave me a 90. <laughs> One. I got a seven. Oh, yeah. Which is an extreme success against the base of 20 because I have no stealth. All right. So describe to me your methodology here. Are you going up the same way you went last time, which is kind of out in the open? Or are you well, sort of going around about? So in my head, there's a bit of a roadway or pathway, cart path or whatever that kind of leads that way. And last time we was just trucking right up the middle of it. And now we're, we're kind of keeping Coming to the sides the of it, maybe off of it a little bit, using sagebrush and the odd tree that might be here or there to to track along the road because I know that's the way to her wagon, but being off the road in the shadows, using the natural terrain as much as we can. Okay, so as you... And adver advertently, no, advent, you're the one good with words when you really, really try hard with something. Adamantly. There you go. It'll work. It's not quite the one I'm looking for. Avoiding mud puddles. Okay. You're not Peppa Pig in it. Stomping in muddy puddles. No, I am not. Sorry. <laughs> I'm decidedly not Peppa Pig in it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> if you're not recent parents, you may not understand that reference. But in any case, as you're walking. We're going for a younger demographic these days. <laughs> as you're walking up. You also notice that there is a second place that looks like it has had the wagon pulled into. And go ahead and roll me some spot hidden. Hey, look at here. It looks like they might have had the wagon parked over right there for a little bit at one point. Yeah. I mean, she's moving this wagon around. Probably by the time they, their latrine hole fills up, they're like, let's move it up the road just a little bit. We're doing spot hidden, we use. We are. 69. Which is a regular nice. fail for you. Uh, I rolled a 57, which is a failure, but I am going to use two points of luck. Two very dear <laughs> and expensive Precious. points of luck to make that a success. All right. So as you're walking up, you have noticed that there seems to be a second campsite kind of thing right? campsite kind of thing it looks like the wagon had been at one point set up here and they've kind of worked it so that she could be in either spot depending on what she wants to do and the one over here has a much bigger area and as you're sort of scanning over that area just kind of out of curiosity you notice a lot of really not tiny but not big holes in the ground like you probably would not be able to fit your arm down it but someone the size of Millie could probably stick an arm into it which I will not be doing Hey, look, hey, something's been bothering me back there at the bar. The lady said, Hi, my, my name's Mildred. I love your name, Millie. Is it short for Mildred? Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, it's just Millie. It's really Millicent, isn't it? And you're just embarrassed to say. No, it's Millie, like Billy. My parents wanted a boy, but they had the name picked out Billy. But then I came out and I was a girl, so I got Millie. Okay, well, Millie, um, you can tell by like seeing the wagon tracks and the mm -hmm. security, and you can see how some of the grass is tamped down. They must have been here for a little. What are you making them holes all in the? You know, look at them. It's like some burrowed down into the ground or something. So now point? that it's been pointed out, you can see them as well, and both of you just feel 
an unsettling unease as you see this unnatural abundance of holes in the ground. My tryptophobia is acting up. <laughs> it's very much something that would activate something like that because it is yeah. not natural looking. So... Can I make like an intelligence roll or something to see if I, in my multitudes of studying, have come across any phenomena? You like, got natural world? No. Um, I'm just trying not to mix meta knowledge and player no or game knowledge. You can roll a straight intel, but I will probably make it hard depending on what your question is. I just want to know if this is created by anything that I would recognize. If there's like, just one or two of them, I'd say is a mole hole. But right, but there's so many. It, this looks like the seminar room at the mole convention is what it looks like. Look at it. That's no moles. Are, they're more solitary than that. It couldn't be that many. Roll it, and we'll make it a regular. I rolled a 24, which actually is a hard success on my intelligence of 75. That might have actually been extreme. I always yeah, struggle. I think that would have been extreme. Is, ex is extreme. So one fifth of seventy five is fifteen. So, as you are thinking about this, it occurs to you that you've been at the snake festival and you've seen all these snakes, and one would fit really nicely in these holes, and. It's not something you've ever seen before. Yaker, I'm not sure the, the the biology of all of this, but those almost look like burrow holes for snakes. But like a lot of them. Yeah, I mean, based on the size of, you know, a snake could fit down there, but, you know, there's only a few breeds of snakes that actually do burrows like that. And most of them, like rattlesnakes, they don't do that. They find rocks to crawl up under and stuff. Sometimes they find a little hole in the ground. But, but they don't burrow like moles. Only a few types of snakes do that. So a snake could fit down there, but it still don't seem right. You know what I'm saying? Kind of yeah. like the moles. A mole make a hole like that, but you'd never find this many mole holes all in the same place. I wonder what's down there. I'm going to hold on a second. I'm going to try to squeeze my hand down Make a luck roll. <laughs> That'd be a big old fair. You get your hand down there, and when you start to pull it back up, you're having a lot of trouble. It maybe needs a little more rainwater to lube, lube it up before... There's free travel in this hole. You gotta spit on it. So it takes you a minute to get your hand back out. Okay. Man, and that they ain't, it's uh it's tight. That's what it is, and I'm I just I'm just not gonna be able to get in there. Yeah. Um Dang it, if I only had smaller arms and hands, I could be investigating this right now. Nice, but the last look at these big bulky forearms that come from being a carpenter man and a master joiner. Joiner. Please don't ask me to. Well, I'll ask you to. Oh my God! Look at how dainty and thin your arms are, <laughs> Millie. Why well, those are? I mean, I, I, this is going to seem fresh, and I'm not being forward at all. But those are wonderfully feminine and dainty hands and arms you got there. Like, exceedingly so. They they would probably just, like, slide right down in them holes. <laughs> I'm <laughs> saying they're beautiful. Uh, I wonder what's down at the bottom them holes. So, I mean, that would be one way to solve this here mystery right here, this little one we got. We've got the larger mystery, but it seems like so. If we can figure this out, we might find and know something about Eleanor that could be useful later on. So I've just suggested maybe one of those holes you just take a quick tip, tip you slip your hand down there, see if you feel anything, bring it right back out. You only got to go as far as your arm will let you. 
All right. I will find a separate hole and put my hand down into it. All right. Don't say it like you that. You didn't want to use the hole I used? Just too sloppy? Thing. A little bit, yeah. Make me a luck roll. God damn. Rolled a 98 on a f- I have 50. Now, is the rule over 50? It only There's applies to skills. Luck's not, it doesn't count to skills. I mean, it does not count to luck. Okay. You just want me to die. I'm not the one reaching my hand into a snake hole. I didn't want to. No, you're the one that says it looks about like you could reach down into it. You reach your hand down into it. And as you are trying to come back out, your foot slips and you end up face planting right into a puddle. And there is mud all over your face. You can feel it on your hairline, maybe a little bit in your ear. And you pull your arm out and right about that time you hear a man from what sounds like the wagon area. Say, hey, what are y'all doing out there? Damn it, Millie. I'm going to pick you up off the ground. I'm really sorry. This is all my fault. Oh, uh, we was just uh, getting to know each other better, and we slipped in a puddle. We did. Sorry to alarm you there, friend. Uh, nothing to see here. Well, uh, you're going to get to know my shotgun if y'all don't get the hell off this plot of land because we, are, we aren't really accepting visitors right now. The revival will be tomorrow. Y'all can come back then and do whatever y'all want to do. But right now, I, the healer's trying to have her rest, and we don't need y'all out there bothering her. Oh, well, never our intention. Didn't even know you was there. We was just kind of... Absorbed in other things, you might say. We'll be on our way there, friend. All right, y'all do that. And come back tomorrow. Okay. I'll uh, reach into my pocket and hand a handkerchief over to Millie. Thank you. It's pretty dirty. So, <clears throat> Did I find anything in the hole? When you start walking off and you give your whole body a look over like ugh you start to notice on your arm there are little flecks of what look like shedded snake skin embedded in the mud uh yaku would you would you look at this like there's a uh, little scales uh little fragments of uh, a shedding of a snake embedded in the mud Almost as if it was swapped off. Right. It's, that, I'm so proud of you. That is a perfect use of the term. And see, you know, that is odd. So, well, I don't know. Is Was it just in the mud around there? and you got it, Or did it come from the hole? Well, when I fell, my arm was still in the hole. Right. And then I pulled it out as I got up. So I didn't, uh, the, my face was took the brunt of the fall into the outside mud. This was from the hole. I think you didn't break your arm without falling me in there, but... Well, if I'd have broken it, we could have gone seen the healer, and we could have just... Or you could have just drank that potion you're holding on to. The, That's true. That uh, youth serum, the elixir of wonderfulness. That's true. Well, I think that we uh, might want to call that... Uh, uh, I think our sneaky time is over for tonight. Yeah. That was a close call. But I think maybe we might want to touch base with this revival tomorrow. I don't know a whole lot about revivals, but generally speaking, they talk a lot about, you know what they stand for and what they're going to do and there's all these people and all this stuff so you might get a little more information i agree it's been my experience so you can call it a revival you can call it a circus you can call it a show you can call it a shop you break it all down it's just somebody selling something so we come back all right so we're gonna maybe during the revival there's another look Oh. The darkness was a distraction, right? And the storm for sneakiness, but a bunch of people around all enjoying a big show kind of thing. That could provide a distraction on its own, too. It could. 
Maybe we get a second chance of looking at her diaries. We'll definitely have to see about that. See if there's a good opportune moment. Make sure we find a seat, you know, like, you know, not too close to the stage, a little further back to the side, you know, set ourselves up for success. I agree. So back to the body bills and maybe Ball with get the bills. us a little shut eye. Yes, agreed. I'm very tired and I am in need of the bathhouse. Yeah. Um, sorry for the uh, the reference back there. I thought it was the best way to get out. I, no, oh, no, no, it was quite no brilliant. Respect to you. Um, it was quite brilliant. Yeah. I'm perfectly fine. All right. Well, yeah. I'm I'll carrying give, enough weapons that if you got fresh, you'd be aware. I'll give you this without an idea roll. The bathhouse would definitely be closed right now, but there is a horse trough in Bloodstone. Oh, hell yeah. Always wanted to bathe in a horse trough. I'll keep my back turned, Miss Millie, and I'll just make sure nobody comes along. Or you can do like most people do and just get in there with your clothes and figure it laundry day as well as a bath well, day. Well, my clothes do have to be washed as well, so I think I will just uh, go ahead and dunk myself clothes and all <clears throat> in the horse trough because that's the thing I do now. As all right, you, you get yourself as clean as you can, and I'm guessing you all go on back up to your rooms. And as you're laying down to bed... There's something kind of bugging you. And you're thinking back to the bottle. And I need you to roll me a power. My power is really low. Um, a 46, which is a failure of a, on a 35. For a mirror, 11 points of luck. I'm very much considering it. Can I use the... Can you use luck on power rolls? I believe yeah. so. You just can't use them on luck rolls or sanity rolls. But then again, I kind of want to know what is going to happen. Isn't that shitty? Oh, my. Oh, my. Um... Mm. It is a lot to spend. 11 points. I'm going to let it happen. Go. This is also a one shot. Yeah, I'm going to let it happen. It's a one shot. So if I die, I die. You remember back to her acknowledging your pain and handing you the bottle. And the bottle is kind of glowing in your mind. And you start thinking, you know, maybe I should... Go ahead and drink it. It seems to have worked for Yocker. I'm not feeling that great right now. Maybe I should drink it. Do I still have a choice? You do. You always have a choice. I think Millie's scientific mind would not want her to waste the only intact vial we have of it. That sounds like a pushing the roll type of thing to me. Oh, that's what I was asking is if I had a choice to drink it and you said, yeah. If it's if it's my failure causes me to drink it, then that's fine. That's just not what you said. You, you do still kind of have a choice. Drink half of it. But the way you worded it makes me think you're kind of pushing the role here. It's a good explanation for pushing the role. And I think if you fail, you will feel compelled to drink half or a quarter or a little bit of it just to see what it tastes like as part of your scientific test of it. Okay. I rolled a 61, which is a failure. And I'm not using... 26 points of luck to make it a success. You can't on a push anyway. There you go. Well, how's it taste from the other room? <laughs> so describe you're drinking it. I'm Are going you just to, drinking a little bit or? I'm going to uncork it and I'm going to sniff it. Swirl it around a little bit. Kind of hold it up to the light, look at it. It smells <clears throat> kind of medicinal. There's a sweet scent to it. But 
there's also an overpowering kind of musky scent. Not unpleasant, but an earthy, maybe even nutty. <clears throat> nutty. All right, I'm going to drink a swig of it, probably about maybe a half of it. I okay. don't know how big it is, so. All right. You drink a swig of it, and you feel like you're glowing. That fatigue and tiredness you've been feeling because it's like 11 o'clock now and you ended up in a mud puddle earlier, it all just slops away from you. And there's that damn word again. You're suddenly feeling like you could go all night if you wanted to. Okay. You feel like every ache and pain is gone. You feel great. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to recork it. Okay. You going to bed now? Yeah. Okay. So, y'all go to sleep. You wake up. What time? Tell me when you wake up. Sunrise? 6 a.m. Sunrise? Well, usually I usually have to get up early for work at uh, Seraphim Falls Funeral Home. Okay. It's about 6 a.m. What are y'all doing? Splashing some water on my face. Putting on a fresh pair of britches. You know, my under britches. Under britches. Because I only brought one pair of pants, so back in the clothes I was yesterday. And uh, I'm going to step out into the hallway and give a little rappy rap upon Miss Minnie's door. Yeah. Miss Minnie, are right, you up? Uh, yeah, just a minute. I'm going to get myself dressed and meet him out in the hallway. I had the strangest dream last night. Well, yeah, what was it about? I was I was building a, a, a casket, a coffin, if you will, and I was joining the corners up with a combination of dovetail and hidden dowels. I mean, it was something I ain't never tried before. It really doesn't make any sense if you're thinking about it because why well, how the dowels because dovetails are plainly obvious and visible too, but you could do one or the other, but why would you do the both? And I don't know if it was trying to tell me that well things are just confusing in my life and I don't know what I'm doing no more or if I'm on the verge of a joinery breakthrough. Oh, I hope it's the latter. Well, the odd part was that, that once the side pieces was mahogany, but the end pieces, well, it was just plain old yellow pine. Hmm. Which made the joiner in a little bit difficult. And then I was, like, confused, like, if I'm going to do these hidden dowels, should the dowels be mahogany or yellow pine? And a part of me was like, well, the part that's going into mahogany ought to be yellow pine, and the part that's going into yellow pine ought to be mahogany. And then I'm like, but I ain't got no two-tone dowels. You would have to join dowels to make two-tone dowels. Yeah, but ain't nobody ever done that. Let's head downstairs. A whole, okay. I told you it was a strange dream. You asked. It was. So. So you head downstairs, and you see that Severin is sleeping at the bar. Mandy's not behind bar just yet. There are a couple people stirring, but it's pretty early. What would y'all like to do? I think we probably, you know, if uh, there's no like vendors or nothing set up yet, we probably just take a quick hoof it over to the general store, maybe buy us a pastry or something. I'm feeling a little peckish. Yeah. All right, y'all, go get a pastry. And I want to ask the people at the general store about the revival, if they know what time it's happening. or Five o'clock. Five p.m.? Okay. Five? Damn, we missed it by an hour. I <laughs> slept in again. Hey, do you guys, well, these are really good pastries. Hey, I was wondering, do you remember that guy used to be around town, uh, Pete the Poet? Whatever happened to that guy? You know, I only come in town once or twice a year, and 
I just got to think of last night. You know who I ain't seen in a while? Pete the Poet. I hadn't seen him in a while. Whatever come of him? He, he, he comes in every now and then, but, you know, for a while, you know, Eleanor's brother got killed and she left. And shortly after Pete left, we didn't see her no more and we didn't see him no more. We kind of figured it was all about over. Well, I guess, you know, the death of poor young Walt could have probably had an effect on both of them, you know. Well, I sure, I, I would say, you know, nobody ever, you know, cast no blame upon Pete, but he had to carry some guilt with him for that. Maybe he just felt like he needed some time alone. As you uh, mentioned Pete feeling guilt, the man has a noticeable turn and oh well yeah i i got to get back over here uh I, you know dick gets real mad if I, I don't have everything just so and i i i need to get back to what i was doing but typical dick thank y'all okay i mean you know in his defense there's nothing worse than an angry dick that's true so um we've got a pretty good amount of time of the day did you see the way his face changed when i mentioned about him? Pete feeling guilty. Well, generally speaking, I would imagine most people around town know that he's got friends in pretty powerful places, so they probably don't want to bring too much into whether or not he's guilty or not, because I could put them on the wrong side of said friends. You're, per- I think I told you this before. But you're pretty smart, Miss Billy. Thank you. So we've got a good portion of the day to ourselves. We're gonna like you know walk out the general store and just we'll kind of walk up the road. So I think we did a really good job not leaving no trace of the fact that we. Kind of snuck into the doc's office. Mm-hmm. We could try that old, more straightforward and honest approach you was talking about last night. We certainly could. So, I hey, think doc, it's for the what's shot. up? Yeah. What's going on? We could let him know that you drank the potion, um, you know, and or the the serum, and let him That's know. That's right, because he knew all about my busted toe. He did. He saw it himself. So, you know, letting him know that you and you alone drank the the serum would be, you know, a good. You know, thing. Right, and, and if he's interested, then we got that whole bottle of serum that you still got that maybe he might want to help in, you know, experimentation upon. Yeah, I doubt he would, but we we we, we can cross that bridge when we get to it. I think he gets uh, gets. If if he ain't in his office yet, we ain't got long to wait for him. You know. Yeah, so we'll head to the uh, the clinic and see if he's there. If not, we'll wait for him to arrive. All right, he is not quite there yet. He doesn't normally open up at 6.30 a.m. What do the streets look like? Are there like dead snakes lying about, dead people lying about? Dead people just hoping for some death somewhere. Just trying to make a living. There's a couple people walking around the... uh, Wagons are still out. A couple of them have compartments of snakes. A couple of them have closed up vendor slots. There's not too much activity yet, but people are starting to file out and get on about their day. So we'll just hang out in front of the clinic until... Doc gets there, eat our pastries, and shoot shit. Hey, I, I got this thought. Yeah. When you remember that page we, we got from the Doc's journal we was reading, and it said uh, it was definitely poison at that point. Mm-hmm. And then the slough in the skin, and then we saw, like, skin sloughs, the remnants of, anyway, at that place last night. Mm-hmm. He talked about her and laying skin. So, what if the youth serum and snake poison are the same thing in different stages or something? You follow me that maybe that weirdness he was talking about in his journal had something to do with snaky based poisons but 
I guess what I'm saying is maybe he was the first one to try the serum and it hadn't been perfected at that point. That's very possible. He ended up with a dead leg over it. But now Eleanor's been able to perfect it over the years, three of them to be exact, and now the thing will fix just about anything. Maybe he was in on the development is what I'm saying now, but... Not part of the rollout. Right. I did have a thought this morning when I was getting ready. Do you have any idea why this town is so obsessed with snakes? And your comings and goings, have you heard anything about why they like snakes? So It's not a very common... I haven't, but... Now that you mention it, you know, <coughs> I never thought too much about it because, well, there's just a lot of snakes out here in the West and in the wilderness. And, yeah, but most you know, people don't, you know, revere them like well, this. Yeah, but a lot of places have rattlesnake roundups and they make a big cook out of about them, but you're right. But here's the part that gets me because the way you just said, I don't know, the word revered or something. All them folks, the snake laying in the uh, in body bills last night, they was, they was all dressed the same in what kind of looked like churchly garments and stuff, mm-hmm. and chanting and doing things you normally see in a church. Set. So I'm just wondering if you knew anything about the history of this festival and why they do it. Do I know anything about the history of this festival and why they do it? <laughs> I think other than what I've already told you now. I think other than what we've already discussed, I, uh, I really can't think of nothing in particular. It never struck me as odd, that is, until this here particular trip. And then you saying words like revered and me thinking about them folks wearing them culty. Cult, cult, you know, I was looking for that word last night. It's almost like there was a cult or something. Are you familiar with that term? I am f- uh, familiar with that term, yeah. So yeah. You know what? Sometimes Jeb would tell me when he was telling me about folks getting into all the witchy crafts and stuff, like you know, I was telling you about mm-hmm. last night. Sometimes he'd talk about it in terms of cult. Maybe there's some connections here. Witchy craft, sloughing off, miracle potions, cults. Both of, both of y'all roll me either a spot hidden or listen or something that might be akin to a notice. I'm going to do a listen. I rolled a 11, which is one point from an extreme success, hard success. I got a hard success as well. On what? Listen. Listen. Both of you hear hurried, heavy footsteps. And oh, say it. As you look up, as you say, what's that, and look up towards the direction of them, you see Jolly hurrying with his limp to the clinic. And as he passes you, he seems to take no notice of you. He's just in a hurry to get inside, and you hear him muttering under his breath, God damn snake oil. He should have been taking the medicine that he should have been taking, not that goddamn snake oil. Now everything's going to be all messed up again. He's going to have that consumption again because he keeps taking that snake oil. His damn parents keep giving him snake oil instead of doing the medicine, and it's never going to work. And as you hear that, he shuts the door, and he's inside. I told you we wouldn't have to wait long. He usually is an earlier, early uh, opener of his purveyorments. So uh, he didn't sound like he was in no mood, to, no mood to be talking about stuff. But, I mean, we are going to have some snake oily conversations with him. So he's on topic, just not on mood. You understand what yeah, I'm I saying? Yeah, I do. <clears throat> we want to try it now, or you want to give him a minute to blow off the steam? He's obviously got collected. Well, let's give him a minute to at least get his stuff set down and, and start his day. Just a few minutes, because nothing's worse than, you know, you come into work and the first thing, everybody's bum-rushing you when you walk in the door. Why don't we take him a pastry? Well, I have this extra one. We did buy a couple extra, so we should take him one in for breakfast. That'll be nice. As you guys are discussing that, you also notice a man who I you know. might recognize as Jim. Good old Jim. 
Never did care much for Jim. <laughs> no, I was like, good old Jim, and then he was going to say something. <laughs> and then I was going to like, never did like Jim. Never did like Jim. <laughs> but you will remember that he has a 10-year-old son named Sammy that was very sickly. They had talked to you a little bit about possibly getting arrangements. I, I remember not being so crass as to actually pull out my little tape measure, but in my head, silently... Uh, Predicting, estimating, and calculating the amount of wood that would be required. As you do. That's how you give good estimates, really. It's good business sense. You see him coming from the same direction as the doctor. And as soon as you notice this, you notice from another direction, Sarah and Sammy, who would be Jim's wife and the mother of Sammy, and Sammy, the 10-year-old kid, coming up from the other side, from around about where their house would be. And Sammy is very pale, coughing. He's got some burn-looking action going on. His hair is all standing up. As they come, I'm going to hold the door open. I'm like, oh, my goodness, come on in, little man. Thank you, thank you. And I'm just going to hold the door open. The mom and look said at that, yeah. not the kid. Oh, it's my pleasure. Come, please. Right ahead of me. I I'm, I'm just feel a little queasy, so you you go right on ahead. I don't know where this accent's coming from. I'm sorry. I'm trying. <laughs> Are y'all going in with her? I'm going to follow him behind you. Has the father gotten there, too? The father in? has already gone in. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll show you. I think we want to see where this goes. Wrap it up. So as you walk in, you can hear Jolly just berating Jim. He should have been on his medicine and not that goddamn snake oil. And Jim's like, well, the, the snake oil works. I don't know why you keep telling me that he should be taking this medicine when the medicine is still leaving him with the consumption. And the snake oil actually works. It makes him feel better. We're going to give him what makes him feel better. And Jolly says, it makes him feel better, but it doesn't make him better. And we're seeing that now because he keeps getting worse and worse and worse when he hasn't had the snake oil in a while. And Jim says, well, I understand that, but we need you to treat him now. Please treat him now and berate me about this later. And Sarah chimes in and she says, please, please, Dr. Jolly, we can't, we don't know what to do. We tried to go to Eleanor's and everything was all closed up. It seems like nobody's been there all night or nobody's been in the wagon at least and i i don't know what to do but little 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 sammy needs some help he got struck by lightning last night and we've managed to keep him up but he he's in a world of pain and little sammy has been coughing the entire time and looking like just the saddest little thing poor bb and jolly says oh fine but Y'all got to promise me y'all aren't going to give him any more of this snake oil. And Jim says, well, the snake oil works. We're going to give him the snake oil, but we need somebody to give the snake oil too. So please keep him alive until we can find Eleanor. And Jolly starts huffing and puffing. And you can tell he's not happy, but he is obligated to treat this child. And so he starts doing that. So I'm going to take one of the pastries over towards the mom and <clears throat> be like, a, I hate to be a bother, but I was wondering if, if the, the young man might like a little something to put on his stomach because, you know, all the meds and things like that can be hard on the stomach. Do you think he'd like a little something? Jolly sees what you're doing and he says, ma'am, I need you to hold off on that just for a minute. I have some medicine. You can give it to him with the medicine inside and that actually would be really helpful perfect so I'm you gonna... put the little pill in there and then like they they don't even know it's there worse than my dog so i'm gonna hand the the pastry to her i'll be like it um i hate to pry but you said he got struck by lightning what are the odds well i'm no mathematician ma'am well, I just I just meant, you know, it's such a, a rare occurrence and, and was he outside playing in the lightning or Well, as children do sometimes, he had wandered off while me and Jim were oh, yeah. getting things ready and next thing you know we hear a crack and 
God has saw fit to smite down our son. Is that what the the hair and the burn mark is from? Yeah, he he got struck by lightning. Hmm. Well, that's just that's just too bad. Um, I did have a question, and, and I hate to bother, I hate to pry, but I just had a question. It, can you not give him the snake oil and his consumption medicines at the same time? Like, well, you- he was feeling better, so we just stopped the medicine because the snake oil was working. We didn't want them to interfere with one another because Jolly said they would interfere with one another. And oh, yeah. The snake oil was working better than the regular medicine as far as making him feel all right, so we thought the snake oil was the better bet. I just, yeah, and it's very, I don't know anything about the medicine, so Jolly could be, uh, I would trust his judgment. I just wondered, maybe the snake oil is acting like, you know when you've got a sore throat and your mom would give you like a an ice pop or something or something cold and it would make your throat feel better for a little while, but then in a few minutes it still hurts because the cold is worn off. Do you think the snake oil may be doing something like that for him where, yeah, he feels okay, but it's not really treating any underlying causes of the pain? And you hear Wow, that was confusing, wasn't it? It was confusing because we, we don't have no kind of ice pops. I don't know what it is you're talking about. See, I think she come from the city. Sometimes they get these big old blocks of ice delivered right to the door. And as you're talking, Jolly chimes in. He says, that's exactly what it is. It makes you feel better, and you don't end up treating what's actually the problem. It's like honey. You know, you drink a little bit of honey or something like that, it soothes your throat. It soothes your throat, don't it? Right, but it doesn't actually make your throat better. Right, because once that honey is done going Comes all right the way back. down, you're back to, damn, I got the scratchy <clears throat> throat again. So while it won't make him feel better right away, probably his consumption meds will make him feel better in the long haul. And she takes it all in, and then you hear the door open. And in walks Eleanor. Dun, dun, dun. These have been the stories of the well, days of our lives. And that might actually be a good place to stop. Yo! Because <laughs> this is going to be the good scene right here. Where's Jerry Springer? <laughs> <laughs> you are the father. No! Oh, I'm sorry, that's Maury. Oh, man. Eleanor. She's coming Eleanor. in to wreck some shit. Just sloughed her way right into the doorway. Mm. All right, cool. This is. Uh, I, I think we've said the word "slough" more times than I really feel. I comfortable. think you've said it more ways. I know it's so hard to say without context of a whole sentence. Slough, slough. At one point, I think you were saying slough. I did not say sloughed. Sloughed. We got the tape. I'm gonna throw the red flag. <laughs> It's where John edits in me saying it just eight times different ways. <laughs> but it's obviously my voice. <laughs> just over, they dubbed over. <laughs> that would be perfect. I would accept that kind of hazing from you. I'd take it because that would be funny. As it's well. some shit I would do too. And it's a lot of editing work and I'd be proud of you for it. <laughs> Anyways, that's the end of this episode. That was a lot of fun. It was. You're we are. like, if I could just keep these two to stay on track a little bit, but. It well, is such, par for the course such good for the play. source material. Mm-hmm. We and are emphasizing role play over anything actually happening. So, I mean, you got any pressing things that are going to happen in, on the next couple Tuesdays? <laughs> no, no, I'm good. I'm good. No, and, and part of it is just you know you feel that invisible weight of it's responsibility to be a one shot. <laughs> pushing down on you. No, no, not that part. Because oh. um, no, that. Under the library, wait, and you're like, well, we're gonna. If I'm gonna put so much work into this, obviously, better accent. I've got to step <laughs> up. I have to step up my ad ad lib game too. What's it called? Ad lib improv. 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 See, I don't ad-lib even know the words. Kind of mean the same thing. I don't but... even know the words. Yeah. But I will say this to the folks at Under the Library. Yes, and. <laughs> but shout out to the crew at uh, under the library. This has been a really great a module. So I'm gonna play. I don't um, want it to be a one shot. I don't I want. want well, play we almost Jake never. Or... We almost never play one shots as one shots. So you know, for us, it's like a it's a it's a mini arc of any given game. <laughs> it has taken quite a bit of power for me to not be like every time y'all go off on a tangent, make up something that happens to get you back on track. But it. it 
it wouldn't be true to the spirit of Under the Library to not have everything constantly off the rails. Right. That's true. So that's but, been... It's like Rick is here in spirit. Yeah. And we're all just a bunch of Ricks just ricking off. Just <laughs> ricking off. <laughs> That's a, so uh, under the library. You're welcome to use that. We're all just a bunch of works just raking off. Um, and we were talking, you were talking to them about seeing them at Chaosium Con. So we're really excited because uh, I think they said they were going to be at Chaosium Con, right? At least a few of them. Yeah. I, I didn't ask in particular how many, but you didn't get like RSVPs. No, wow. No. But we're going to be doing Should karaoke. we put in our, our request for which ones we'd like to attend yeah. and which ones we'd feel they okay invited to us at home? They invited us to karaoke. No, right. I invited. Oh, you them invited to them to karaoke. Okay, I mean, at chaos, huh? It was meant to be a joke, and they kind of latched onto it. So we're doing karaoke now. You in painted yourself you into a corner. <laughs> Just didn't painted you? himself into a corner. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna. Have so to, John's uh, just gonna do that song tequila da, 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 where it's like 15 minutes hey! of just like that and you just go tequila I'm gonna have to dust off my version of Elver, Elmer Fudd singing fire <laughs> yeah <laughs> I grew up with that shit it's so good I, I'm sure you got plenty of Billy Joel up there knocking around you I do just, yeah I but yeah. Elmer Fudd <laughs> singing that fire song is. <laughs> what about the Elmer Fudd grilled cheese song no. grilled cheese grilled cheese it's like uh. <laughs> it's amazing we'll make you watch it but this has been <coughs> what has this been episode two of the snakes oil yes our and... call of cthulhu 7e module and i've been john the keeper of pineapple lore i have been emily millie rumsford and i've been steve yacker 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 so, Steve, I hear you're going to be on the internet again soon. Uh, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night in the great Carrie Smith run game. That's right, the mid-season game. finale of her uh, Outbreak Undead Death Toll series going on. Zombie apocalypse kind of thing. Nice. Yep, I'll be in that. Excited. You know, check it out. It's really good. You know, you've got like 24 hours. 23, 22 hours. I don't know. Some but get hours. your ass to work because you got a, like eight hours, eight episodes, 24 hours worth of catch up to do. You're going to have to fast forward through the stupid part. <laughs> get some coffee. Just, you have just, just enough time to catch it. up. <clears throat> if you're watching this on YouTube, it obviously would not be tomorrow, but, but it's available video, right now. <laughs> it's available right now on demand. You will also be able to experience friends of the channel. Mightiest Finn. Mightiest Finn, that's right. And you will be on there. Will from Live from the Apocalypse. That is true. He is on there. Also, um, Kaz, the mini arcanist. Nice. We've, uh, a regular on Carrie's channel, a regular know, legend on Carrie's channel. A great mini painter. Um, they are wonderful. So, yeah. So be good. sure to check that out. Carrie Smith. 2012. Has she changed her handle yet? Either one will work. Carrie Smith 2012 on YouTube or Crossroad Game. Crossroad on, Games. On YouTube. So check them out if you feel so inclined. This module is available on the Miskatonic Repository if you'd like to check it out. It is called The Snake's Oil. It is by Michael Frank. It may be listed as by Under the Library, but... You can also check out their stuff at underthelibrary.com. They have a long-running Call of Cthulhu podcast in at least one time period. I don't want to spoil anything. Um, yeah, I already did, apparently, now that I'm thinking about that. Did saying you? at least one is kind of a spoiler in itself. Oh, yeah, 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 it is. Right. It kind of is. Wow. Just <laughs> ruin it, John. Jeez. But we will It's see. like when the, the, the spokesman at the front of the room for a press conference says, I can neither confirm nor deny. Hey, yeah. thanks for confirming. Thanks for confirming <laughs> that for me, guy. But we have been percentile vice, and we will be percentile vice next week with what is also the possible shocking conclusion to... All we can say for sure is it'll be the third episode. <laughs> it'll, it'll be the, the third, third episode. installment of this Definitely. one shot. <laughs> Definitely the third. I'm having a blast with this one. I love it. I love the setting. Oh, and yeah. the thing and uh, trying to figure out how it all works together. I got some crazy conspiracy theories in my head and how it all works together. So 
Yes. Looking forward to playing it. Thanks. Thanks, John. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And goodbye. Get out. Let me make sure the mic's... Yeah. We're good. We're good. How irritating is it to try to keep her for us to... Some I of think those he conversations was, fine. was to fill some dead spots so you could look over at your notes. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm going to do some role play. I think he was fine right up until we wanted to go get pastries. <laughs> and then he was over and he was like, yes, you got pastries. <laughs> well, was, yeah, yeah. Okay, you got but Well, we don't get to role play I bargaining talk to the, the guy. pastries. <laughs> choosing the pastries. <laughs> There's because I want a bear claw. What if, what if want they want don't have bacon, one? I want to talk to a coffee. manager. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... No, it was good. It wasn't that I was super. No, we were just trying to figure out like how to start the day in a way that would give us some time to figure out what we wanted to do, and that was a way to get us out of the uh, body bills and into the city proper and kind of spitball some ideas of what we were doing. It wasn't like a. It sounds like we should have ignored the dude with the shotgun because there was nobody in the wagon last night, according to Sammy's parents. They were true, but there was plenty of people outside and around and ready to shoot us. <laughs> you attracted one from wherever they were doing interesting things. Fist and snake holes. I think they tried to do some some ritual there in the doctor's office. I think the lady turned into a snake and then sloughed off all the skin. And he put it all on her belly because he was, like, trying to put it back. Like, this is yours. There's only one major clue that you haven't gotten yet. Do we still have the chance to get it? Can you rearrange things and put it, obviously, in front of our faces? <laughs> no, I just meant there's some, you know, some things that you missed just because you missed the timing. You didn't find it when it was happening. But right. there's some things that are just stagnant. They are always there. Well, one thing you missed happening. There's one part of the background, like, backstory of the module that hasn't come out yet. And I will try to get it to you. No, I'm just... Going to Jolly was a pretty good idea, but you may not get it right now from Jolly. That's cool. Yeah, but I was trying to get some brownie points with Jolly by being like, well, here's a layman's way of explaining why you still have to take the meds. Yeah, I think that worked. Because he'll like me. I think he... It's a good thing I didn't pipe up. Well, I took it last night and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it worked real good. Yeah. It worked great. I think he went from indifferent but not negative to a little bit positive off that. I think that's a safe assumption. Yeah. Oh, God. Where did I save this? Please tell me I saved this. <laughs> Let's play it again. One more time from the top. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm sleepy. So, I pitched something to her. Did she catch it or hit it? Both. <laughs> this is I John's way of telling you we're pregnant. I'm kidding. We're not. Uh, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> its name is Wally. <laughs> uh, um, never mind. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I do know. I don't know, apparently. Well, I was assuming he was asking me if I had heard about what Sarah was going to name her kid. Oh, yeah, I, I know that, too. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I like different names as much as, the, but my whole time I was just thinking, yeah, what am I going to call him? There's no good nicknames for either because, name. Because, I mean, Charlotte? Okay, cool. Charlie. Okay. Cross? B? B. Rosie? Ross? We'll call him Bing. <laughs> Bing. Chandler. <laughs> I think Bing Crosby was the first Bing. Call him Nash Stills Crosby and Young. Crosby Everett. <laughs> we call him the Levy. Levy. Everett. <laughs> Back to my thing. Sorry. Let's talk about your thing. The Mad Libs thing. I was trying to work it out in my head. 
couldn't quite come up with a way where it's feels sustainable and we don't run into the thing of we're doing the same prompts over and over. So you said the Mad Lib thing like you did give me some remember when we talk about switching out on the good Debate morning class. Gap, that mm-hmm. we would go through the like gym, like we get a topic and then we have to role play like our char- characters in that topic oh so. that's the mad lib yeah. thing i was thinking mad libs like the little pad of paper give me a noun give me an adjective. well at one point we had described it as being like mad libs gotcha. okay i'm tracking now sorry so instead of doing it that style where it's like one person giving Mad Lib style prompts to the other two. Everybody gets five minutes in a hot seat, right? And the other two have to role play and try to make them laugh. And every time you laugh, you got to take a note of your score. And that way it's 15 minutes without a little bit of... 15 minutes of bet you two can't make me laugh. Yes. And it alternates. And it's, it's still, like golf, right? I want the lowest score. Yeah. It's still kind of competitive, you know? It's still role play and still kind of improv y Mad Lib style, but it's not like a prompt. It's just. You dive in. And it's kind of entertaining without being spicy because everybody likes to laugh, you know? It's something I could see people watching more of. Alternatively, I was thinking today while I was at work. We could think about possibly having, like, shoot Hannah 50 bucks a week or something, or a week that we actually do this thing, and have her come up with 15 minutes of D&D or TTRPG TikToks that we can all experience together. I know I swore we wouldn't do TikToks. But they are all over the place now, and the reaction content on them is usually pretty good. And I know Hannah would come up with good stuff, and it wouldn't have the problem of if she does it, then while she's sitting here, she would never be surprised by anything. It would be a good opportunity for us to throw a little money Hannah's way. Yeah. It would also lead to the video constantly being demonetized, but they're never monetized anyway, so. Constantly being demonetized. Oh, because we were spending money? No, because it... TikTok is notorious for getting YouTube account, like, videos demonetized. Because it usually has copyrighted music. It very often has copyrighted music. I would most likely have to go back in and mute sections from time to time. We could kind of let Hannah know, hey, if anything's got fucking shoot the thrill in it, maybe think about leaving it out. But it's the thought I had. No problem. Yeah. I like TikTok. People are always making new shit. I like when people are curating TikToks and they're all actually funny and worthwhile and you're not just scrolling it for hours on end. Don't call out me like that. I'm not intentionally like calling you out. It's just like (laughs) that's what it's made to be. You keep scrolling it until you find something funny and then you watch it and then... I like my 30 seconds of dopamine, dopamine spread out amongst three hours. Okay. Other than that, I don't have many ideas. I like both of those. Which would you rather try? Because she had some misgivings about the try not to laugh no. version. No, no, no. I think it's gonna, it would be hilarious. I think I'm at a severe disadvantage because I laugh at fucking everything. So one of my first thoughts was, you're going to lose every time. Every time! John's going to win every time. Because he can just stone face his way through. Except, like, if you count you guys laughing when you're trying to make me laugh, because you laugh at your own shit more than you laugh at anybody else's jokes. Okay, well, maybe we have the expanded rules. (laughs) You know, the person on the hot seat laughs, that's one point against them. But if one of the people 
role playing breaks laughs at their own shit and I, points against them. Like or if, we could take out the competitive thing altogether. Depending oh. on we can workshop it. Yeah. Really. We can try it out and see how it works out. Very whose line is it anyways? Do you still feel like you'd need a prompt of some kind? Or is it literally... I don't know. I think we just start. Like one of us. Because it's almost like... Ethel! <laughs> yeah. It's almost is like... Is that you? After all these years? I didn't notice you with the boob <laughs> job. Uh, it's almost like that YouTube account, the the Smosh one, where like they don't they're paired, but they don't know what each one's gonna come dressed out as, and then they have to that do a was skit. Kind of what I was thinking. So like, there's these Smosh videos where like there's one person who has like a mouthful of water, which would be hilarious if it wasn't for all of the equipment. But we can get a harmonica, get three harmonicas. So they do they do that to where they put the harmonica in their mouth, so when they do laugh, it makes this like harmonica sound. <laughs> it's great. But basically, they have like two people, like two groups. And they are paired up, but they don't know what the other person, they have all these, like, props and costumes, and they don't know what the other ones are going to dress up as. So they just come out, and they're, like, dressed up as, like, a witch riding a bicycle and, like, a dude in a suit, but he's pulled the suit over his head and just has, like, a baby doll head sticking out the top of it. And they come out, and they have to do a skit to make the person with the water in their mouth laugh, but they don't know, like, what the skit's going to be because they have no idea how you're going to dress up, and you just have to hope for the best. And they do singles, too, and sometimes they're not funny. Sometimes it's in jokes. Sometimes they're extremely funny. And I will keep making the same joke at her like three days later. Like I called her on her work phone like, hey, low Toledo parts, you're my favorite pizza place. Because there's this one guy who has a fake phone. He'll be like, yeah, Domino's, you're my favorite pizza place. And I'll hang up the phone and pick it back up. It's like, yeah, Pizza Hut, you're my favorite pizza place. Little Caesars, you're my favorite pizza place. And then sometimes the girls just come out and flash a dude, but you don't actually see. That's a good way to get demonetized. <laughs> but they're not so no flashing anybody well endowed either. So. Yeah, both the girls in there are completely flat. Just probably for the fine tall for you. <laughs> just probably fine for him. <laughs> the tall one is very well endowed, but she doesn't. But she's flash not there people. all the time. And she's not there all the time. Anyhow. We need to, you need to wrap yourself up. We got to get these kids home, put them to bed, put me to bed. Do you want to try to invite Mumford this Saturday and see if he wants to chat about backwater with us like we were talking about like weeks ago and I keep forgetting to follow up on? Uh, we could. Uh, I think I'd like to give him a little more notice. Well, we can start the dialogue, and if we can't do it this week, that's fine. He did, I don't know if you saw it on Twitter, offer to run back, a backwater one shot for us. Oh, I, I did not that. see that on Twitter. We should do that. Was it on our Twitter? I made a comment. I think you probably saw like on Saturday, it was like, hey, I've been really busy at work, and I haven't been shouting people out like I have, so I did like... Boom, I burst, boosted Carrie, I boosted uh, Cassie, I boosted PV, and then boosted the Backwater Games thing. And I'm like, hey, this thing's good as shit. And he probably, hey, thanks for doing it. And, oh, I love it. And then, then somewhere in that in the comments section, he's like, hey, I would love to, to run that for you guys. I'm like, dude, don't threaten me with a good time. Yeah, that would be fun. I agree. We need to get that on the books going somehow. So, I know it's impossible to tell, but like if this one takes one more week, we could try. Like, could he do it the following Tuesday or to play it safe? We could say two Tuesdays from now. Do you feel like we're close enough to finish it out next week? At the rate you're going, or with yeah, some we're railroading? We're just, it's not in. <laughs> <laughs> um, two Tuesdays from now is also the one right before Thanksgiving. 
I don't know what everybody's Thanksgiving plans are. God I know damn, normally it doesn't happen. Huh? And we got to think about Thanksgiving like just as a family. I, I don't know. Normally things don't happen the week before. But then again, I know y'all sometimes do Black Friday and sometimes do the Friday before. But Hannah's not in school now, so that might be a little more yeah. leeway. So but normally our family tradition is the Friday after Thanksgiving. I think we altered it a little bit and kind of did an extra one for while Hannah was here. That's right. And y'all kind of did the same thing for Christmas, too. Sometimes if Hannah was going to be here, we would have an extra thing. But Hannah should be here and Tim should be here. So I'm thinking Thanksgiving on the 25th. So I could ask him if he wanted to run backwater for us (coughs) on the 15th. I've got the backwater PDF. Um, so we could make characters or I think there's pregens in the book. I'll look. If not, he might have some pregens. Some ways I think doing things like that is just easier to look give me a pregen. Let's start playing and you can teach me the game as we play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that might be a good idea. Even though I kind of hate playing with pregens, it is facilitating yeah. and it lets them show off their pre-gen characters that they made that yeah. go with it so yeah just a lot of times you have to learn so much of the game to be able to create your own character that but it's uh, time consuming like i gotta make a delta green character before friday Ooh. well if you want we can just like pull him into a channel in the discord i'll find another shade of green if i haven't already pulled him into one of those channels <laughs> And uh, we can discuss it. He should be in the one that Hannah and all of us were in for the... Naked Wizard. The only thing I would worry about there is if he is not 100% on it being a one one shot at two hours, would he want to run it the next Tuesday? which is the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. So figure out. Uh, yeah, I'll talk to him and see, you know, whether he thinks he could put us through a two to two and a half hour one shot. So I think our when we did the one shot with him, we came in on about two and a half hours over. Yeah, but that was literally one encounter, you know, it wasn't a Right, right. Just yeah. proves my point. But what's a one shot? A single encounter. Shit. Um, kind of circling back. Black Friday for Thanksgiving is fine, but I will have to work that day, so we'll get off at six. Okay. So. Yeah. I may get off earlier, and if I do, you guys can still do it whenever and I'll just come when I get done. I mean I'm used to that it's not a big deal <laughs> but I ha- I'm off Thanksgiving day because we're closed but <clears throat> I don't know my mom certainly hasn't said anything about Thanksgiving um, I'm sure they're having one. Oh, I'm sure and I'm sure it'll be on sandwiches. the day <laughs> um, yeah word from up north Atlanta apparently Mike and Kristen through mom was like We'd really just like Thanksgiving to be pulled pork because mine is so fucking awesome. It is good. Literally, if you take Gemma anywhere that she orders barbecue, there will be a mild discussion of what how it compares to yours, and it never beats yours in Gemma's eyes. Even Tony, like she would go to like we like to go to Sundays, and she would order the brisket grilled cheese, and she liked it at first. But every time, it's not as good as Papa's. And the girl don't eat fucking pork for nothing. She don't eat meat for nothing half the time. But she likes her brisket. So you should Which call is that beef, away. by the way. Whatever it is. It doesn't matter. She doesn't eat meat. Yeah. <laughs> if it's not chicken nugget for her. So I was thinking of doing like two Boston butts. So there was plenty of 